Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained, and educated. So let's dive in. So Joel is a serial technology entrepreneur with a love for building consumer-facing products. He previously co-founded four venture-backed technology startups and brings a lifetime of experience building and operating technology companies to RepairSmith. As a technical founder, Joel has served as CEO, COO, and CTO for his previous companies, having raised over $100 million in venture financing and scaled multiple businesses nationally. Joel actually began programming at the age of 10, started college at 16, and founded his first technology company upon graduating at 21. He holds a bachelor's degree in engineering from Queen's University and an MBA with distinction from Harvard Business School. So all that is to say, Joel, it sounds like you've had a a very long and distinguished career. You're ready to retire anytime soon? (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Not anytime soon, no. I, I, I love doing what I do. Very cool. Well, it sounds like you've been busy and, uh, you know, I'm really excited to chat and learn more about RepairSmith, but it sounds like this wasn't uh, your first company. I'm curious, so is this your first company in the automotive and sort of logistics space? It is. Um, you know, I, um, my partner and and the original founders of uh, uh, came up with the concept and the idea are all from the automotive mm. space. <clears throat> and initially they were looking for a CEO who had deep experience in automotive, but I ca- I'm the customer of this business, right? Mm-hmm. I love the concept. I would use it. Uh, I do use it. And I, even if I wasn't running it, I would use it. So yeah. um, I convinced them that my consumer background of, of building the tech and the product and the marketing and, and the consumer stuff was a good match with their deep automotive knowledge. And together we could team up and do it. Very cool. So what is the pitch for RepairSmith? Uh, what does it do and why do people love it so much? Yeah, so the pitch is that... Um, we are the most convenient form of car repair because we come to you. And mm. it turns out we're also the safest form of car repair in the current current yeah. environment. Just like you planned. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Better be lucky than good. Um, but no, uh, you know, we looked at the car repair industry as a business model that is over 50 years old, mm-hmm. still primarily telephone based, right? Either local retail or, t- you know, you're driving by and you just pull right in or telephone based. And so... Um, we saw a real opportunity to advance the industry uh, for the customer yeah. to create, you know, the kind of experience that they expect uh, in the modern rideshare world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. And uh, obviously, with the, I, I guess I sort of have to start every conversation talking about the pandemic at this point. But like you mentioned, I mean, what have you seen with the pandemic? I'm assuming that business has gone up, or what, what have you seen in general? There, more people want to well, use your service. I, I think so. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell because we were growing basically as fast as we could before Got the it. pandemic and the pandemic didn't really change anything mm. for us. We, we thought it might for about two weeks and then realized that um, that's a good problem to people, have. I think <laughs> <laughs> even if people were doing less car repair overall, they liked our service mm-hmm. a lot more than other options. So yeah. for us, it didn't have really any material effect. Um, but mile overall miles driven is back to, you know, 80, 90% of what it once was. Mm. So I think I, you know, the, the, the lockdown period might've had a pretty big impact, but, but these days it's not a huge factor other than it's a huge factor from a safety standpoint, yeah. but from a, from a business standpoint, uh, everything's back to where we were before. So pre pandemic, you guys were growing pretty quickly. And I guess to give, uh, uh, listeners and viewers a sense of the business, are you guys in nationally or what, what's the sense of the business right now? Footprint. No, so we, we really, um, focused regionally mm-hmm. for the first year. So we, lo- we launched August, 2019. So we're a little over a year. We're, we're about two years old, mm-hmm. but we're about a little over a year of actually, you could buy our services. We were, you know, spent a year yeah. figuring it out and building the software yeah. and all that fun stuff. And so, um, so now at this point we were really focused on the Southwest. Mm-hmm. So we're headquartered in LA. We do every major metro in California. We do Phoenix, Tucson, uh, and Vegas. And so we wanted to kind of figure out the model regionally, test and learn in different markets, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, a small market like Tucson looks very different than Los mm-hmm. Angeles, right? Yeah. And so uh, we've kind of figured that out. And now we're pushing in 2021, uh, we, we plan to do about half the country and then 
wrap up the, hmm. the cold the cold spots in twenty in twenty twenty two. Yeah. So I got you on my podcast on a, at a good time right before you guys are about to hit the gas, and I might not be able to talk to you in a year when uh, you're in half the country or more, right? <laughs> I'll always talk to you. I, I, I love your I, I actually love your site and uh, happy to always chat. Cool. Well, and so I assume this might come on the heels of fundraising or what's uh, propelling the expansion. Yeah. So they're, they're, um, you know, normally you hit some milestones, you, you check some boxes, mm -hmm. you put some more money in the bank and do the next stage. So generally speaking, that's where we are. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm curious, you know, pre-pandemic, and I mean, I guess even now, you were seeing a lot of growth. Why, why do you think customers prefer RepairSmith over going to the local auto shop? Now, obviously, you know, it's more convenient to have someone come to your house, but I feel yeah. like the dynamic I've seen, especially with, you know, dr drivers and gig workers that I know so well, is that a lot of people tend to have like their guy, and usually it uh -huh. is a guy, <laughs> you know, with their <laughs> local mechanic, maybe some female mechanics out there, but you know, they yeah. have like their person or their shop that they like or their deals that they're getting. And, um, you know, it's kind of hard to get them away from that. What, 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 what have you found? Yeah, look, I think <clears throat> for people who have found their guy and, and have somebody that they love, then, then you know, by all means, carry on. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that there's a huge portion of the population that uh, is mobile, values um, convenience, values price transparency yeah. and has a low level of trust, frankly. You know, I, I don't think that there's 90% of people have a trustworthy person that they can turn to. Yeah. Uh, what we found is that more like 75% of people want more, expect more, right? They want upfront pricing, transparency. They want to know what they're going to pay mm -hmm. um, before they get, you know, drive in there, get the vehicle up on a lift and they're yeah. kind of trapped. Um, they want to be able to schedule online right yeah. and, and and pick a time and they want it to uh, you know everyone's working at home or even when they were working in the office you know spending half a day doing it yeah. is just not a great experience or losing their car for x amount of time coordinating the rides back and forth which is easier nowadays with the ride share than it was yeah. you know a decade ago was even more of a pain in the butt right yeah um but overall you know when we before we launched we did a bunch of market research and about 75 percent of people want you know digital communications yeah. they want online pricing and scheduling and they want mobile service so it was it was very clear from the outset and we've seen that if you you know hop on yelp and read our reviews yeah. and you know people uh are really enjoying the service we provide. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's interesting because a few of the items you mentioned, like honestly, didn't even really sound that unique to the sort of repairs at your house model, right? Like digital yeah. digital scheduling is something that well, you're right, the competitors don't offer, but it's sort of just yeah. something that it's like you guys have seized upon some of these opportunities that the competition just wasn't doing a great job of. Well, I mean, when I first got into it, right, I realized I don't think there's a single shop in the country where you can just book an appointment online, right? right? I, I'm, I'm taking my kid to the dentist later today, and you know my dentist can do a scheduling online, and and you know the local, uh, you know, whatever it is, this mm -hmm. is like e-commerce 101, yeah. and we're not even there yet, mm -hmm. right? And so, th I guess people have accepted this model and once they kind of think about it just like you did right mm -hmm. wait wait why can't i just book an appointment online that's like the simplest e-commerce thing to do yeah. it just doesn't exist interesting yeah no I, yeah. I just really like the concept of sometimes people are so focused on revolutionizing some industry or you know bringing something completely new to the table and sometimes it's literally just examining what other people are doing and just realizing where the holes are and you know it sounds like that's actually where you've captured a lot of the value now obviously the you know having the repairs done at your home is convenient and there may be some cost savings. So I am curious because, you know, I think that's the thing that a lot of customers are are very conscious and aware of when it comes to vehicle repairs is the cost, right? Oh, should I do this yeah. myself? Should I pay someone else? How much does it cost? I don't want to get screwed over by this person. So uh, how, how do your services compare? And uh, let, let's, and I'll, my follow-up will probably be to have you uh, explain it and break it down exactly how it compares. Yeah. <laughs> so. so look, a, a big, we had a couple of mandatory kind of table stakes concepts when we when we set this up mm. right it, and it was no dead ends so we don't want any experiences where we get out there we look at the car and say oh this is a really big problem we can't handle it Got start it. all over again right um we wanted super high quality repair because you know my, our core investor is, is mercedes mm. right so they're not gonna accept um a low-end quality of repair right it, it had to be 
equivalent that you'd get at a dealership, but the pricing had to be the equivalent that you'd get at any shop in your neighborhood, an yeah. average good shop, right? Uh, we're not the, you know, if you dig hard, I'm sure you can find a guy on Craigslist who will do okay. it cheaper, et cetera. But we try to be our core, core principles are, you know, super high quality, fair price, and of course, incredibly convenient service. And so we have attempted very, you know, we're still not perfect at it, but we, we work hard at it is to be the average price in each market that we service. Mm -hmm. And because of our different cost structure, you know, how can you show up at somebody's house and give it to them for the same price? Right. right? But we don't have the rent. We don't have the big equipment that mm -hmm. you would have at a shop, but we worked with Mercedes to build up a van where we can do 90% mm -hmm. on site. So we have the diagnostic equipment, we have the fluids, we have the compressed air, we, you know, we have, the tools, et cetera, to do 90% on site. But if we can't do it on site, we will take it away, take it to work with our, our shop partners mm -hmm. and bring it back when it's done. And so from a customer experience, you never leave your house or office, depending on where you have the service done, um, no dead ends. Got it. Interesting. So obviously the, I guess I'm assuming not having any rent definitely adds to some of that cost savings. Is, is there any, I mean, I guess, tell me, you know, cause I think with every industry or service, like what's the, the main driver of the cost in the existing, you know, kind of competitive industry and like, what's your main driver of cost in like the model that you guys are doing? Well, look, I mean, I think 90% of it overlaps, right? Which is the, the labor, it's a labor okay. intensive business, right? You can't box up car repair and ship it across the country. Right. It's, it's, it requires highly skilled and they're not technicians cheap. and they're not cheap. And you know, you get what you pay for, mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day. Um, and so labor is the biggest component, whether it's a shop business model or our business model. Right. And so certainly not spending your, 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 time driving around all day mm -hmm. is key to this business. It's, it's very logistics based. And so being able to do stay in a reasonable, not, we don't want to be driving from, I think you're an LA guy, yeah. you know, from Long Beach to Pasadena between appointments, right? Yeah. It's just not practical. So, so figuring out all the software for, for, for that, if we can do it right, we can get down to about the same efficiency as a shop because we stay in a smaller area, but we don't have the overhead costs. So they balance each other out. Mm -hmm. we, we serve less cars per day, but we have less overhead costs. And so we don't have the rent or a lot of big bulky equipment, like I said, that's used in less than 1% of, of you know, a, a certain equipment is used very infrequently. Mm. And so we don't invest in that equipment. We invest in the high volume equipment that's used 90% of the time. Got it. So that 90% of the time, what's the most common type of service or repair that people are asking for? Yeah, I mean, it's the same. We have the same distribution repairs as you'd see at, a, at an independent shop, mm -hmm. which is, you know, oil, brakes, uh, batteries, uh, check engine light, no start issues like starters mm -hmm. or, or, or spark plugs or other things of that nature. Uh, and then it gets into the, the long tail of everything else, right? Yeah. I, I hear something, I smell something, I, it's making a noise, et cetera, Got it. Um, down the curve. And so, it, like I said, it was important for us to hire and plan to have a uh, you know um, ten year plus experienced technicians who could do multi brand all um, you know uh, cases yeah. that you'd see at a shop because they're out there on their own they have to be experts and be able to diagnose and handle it. Yeah, are you a car guy yourself? Uh, <laughs> I am not. Um, uh, you know, because I've got a I, question here for you if you are. <laughs> yeah, uh, honestly. Um, I am a utilitarian when it comes to cars. I used to be a car person that I used to spend too much of my income mm -hmm. on, on automotive. And then one day I got old and got kids yeah. and said, uh, you know, I want it to be a taxi that I don't care if it gets scuffed and banged and, yeah. and this and that. And I transitioned to completely, you know, Toyota Prius utilitarian lifestyle. And from then on, I've been very it's a utility for me. Yeah. Well, I guess thinking about, uh, you know, sort of the audiences that you're serving, what's uh, one tip or, you know, what's sort of some general advice that you're giving to folks, you know, like obviously based off your experience in the business, um, you know, what's something that vehicle owners should be considering that, you know, maybe they aren't and, you know, that you've kind of discovered in your work? Look, I, I mean, vehicle maintenance is um, the, the key to, to having a long lasting a uh, healthy car, right? Mm -hmm. And and we work with a lot of fleets as well as individuals, mm -hmm. right? And and they know that you spend the money up front and it pays back, you know, two fivefold down the road. Yeah. And so 
it's not a scam. Uh, it, it's 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 uh, um, you know your basic um, oil filters, tires, etc. Will save you money in the long run, right? That oil keeps your tires. Healthy. And anything else? Uh, you know, uh, brakes, brakes, right? So so oil. So sort filters, of the basic brakes, stuff, just staying on top tires. of. Stay, staying on top of it is the key to a healthy car, especially as the car gets older, mm. you know, we see the cost of ownership goes up and up over the years mm. for especially the, 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 the more you don't maintain it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's, there's study after study data after data showing that. And so, you know, we certainly plan to offer folks, um, convenient ways to stay on top of their maintenance without it being a ha like you yeah. know it's a hassle. Like, do well, I want to on think, Sunday go right. to the go to the shop and spend my Sunday getting this stuff done? Not really. Right? I think I think that's a challenge that a lot of folks have, and you know, especially I think people in the gig economy who are you know kind of living more paycheck to paycheck or even you know day to day. In that there are certain things like okay, everybody knows or everybody says you're supposed to do all of this maintenance and all that, and it's gonna mm -hmm. you know save you time or money in the long run. But how, what are the systems or what's the most effective way? Are you guys building products or tech out on the back end to sort of really ensure like, hey, I know this is what's good for me, but I'm not going to do it if someone doesn't tell yeah. me basically. The answer is yes. Coming coming in Q1 2021, mm -hmm. we will have, you know, packages where we will just show up like the termite guys yeah. do uh, when it needed to take care of it for you. I mean, we'll probably, unlike the termite guys, we'll probably call in advance <laughs> and, and make sure you're there, right? I, I don't know if you have this, but every now and then I look yeah. outside and, and the guy will be spraying outside my house. Um, yeah, so uh, we, we're trying to make it super convenient where mm -hmm. it's just no thought maintenance, right? And, and certainly it's driven by the amount of miles you drive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Time is a nice shortcut, but it's really miles based. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I ask is I think there's a lot of cool technology that can, I mean, like you guys are kind of knocking out that first level of the basic stuff, right? Like scheduling. Mm -hmm. But I think the next level is sort of understanding, you know, like how many miles people are putting on, you know, on a daily or weekly basis and literally tying into the vehicle or an OBT2, you know, type device so that you can kind of yeah. then, you know, not like, you know, like my old BMWs, for example, like my wife's old BMW is like, okay, you're supposed to get an oil change right now. All right. But it's yeah. like the more, um, you know, sort of, uh, I guess, technologically um, products that, you know, are going to help with that. So so I, I think that's cool. Um, I'm curious to know, what's it like to work as a mechanic on your platform? Are they employees, independent contractors? How does it work? Yeah. Um, so all of our technicians are employees. We mm -hmm. have no contractors. And and that was really important. Remember I said we, we, we kind of thought of some guiding principles when we first started. And the quality was one of those guiding principles. And we didn't feel like we could get to that level of quality with a contractor model. Yeah. Uh, we also didn't feel like um, we would be able to recruit the best people in the industry on that model. And, you know, setting aside the, the, the whole legality questions, right? Is, yeah. is it even legal, right? Uh, who knows? Um, but it's a, it's a moving landscape on that front. Yeah. So we just, from, the, from day one, thought quality in car repair, you know, certainly delivering something requires one level of trust, right? Yeah. You're not going to steal my McDonald's order, but taking apart somebody's car, you know, the car, the, the, the repair industry is all about trust, right? Like, as you said, the guy, we mm -hmm. want to be that guy that yeah. you trust and you're not going to trust us if we send, um, you know, unverified or, or, um, you know, underemployed technicians to your home. And so from, for us, they all are employees. They all have great, Help mm. you know benefits, um, you know they have their guaranteed hours, and they're they get to work in a brand new Mercedes with new tools, customer facing, as part of a tech company, you know, yeah. uh, um, communicating with HQ on Slack and all those things. So so we think for somebody who wants to help drive the industry forward, their industry forward. We think it's it's as good a gig out there as as they come. Yeah, no, it, it makes a lot of sense, and obviously this topic is in the news a lot. So I've been really thinking about the it from a you know perspective of like what are companies that are hiring you know drivers, gig workers, whoever as employees, like what makes it work? Because you know you have some companies like Uber and Lyft that are complaining. Okay, we could never hire employees and make it work. I just did a uh, moderated a panel last week at our conference, uh, Curbivore, with the CEO of uh, Saucy, um, who actually is here in LA 
Chris, and he um, not only a CEO of an alcohol company, but also a marijuana company. So he's doubling up. And one of the things he said is, you know, in marijuana delivery, uh, the state of California deems drivers have to be employees. And he actually loved that model um, for a lot of the similar reasons you mentioned. You, know, you get that higher quality, you know, you sort of like you're able, you know, retention, I think, matters a lot more with employee versus independent contractor. And it maybe even allows you to do stuff, you know, like let customers favorite, you know, uh, mechanics, whereas if they're independent yeah. contractors and they're churning off after six or 12 months, you don't want the customer to be able to favorite a mechanic and then they're gone <laughs> and the next time they need a service, right? Yeah, yeah. No, ab- absolutely, right? I mean, I I want to invest in the long-term careers of our mm-hmm. of the folks who are, who are working for us and churn, quality, uh, a whole host of issues just didn't align for a high, highly skilled job like ours to, yeah. to you know, it, 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 I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me as a model other than the only way it makes sense is I want to save a lot of money and, and be able to build a big business without spending money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think looking out onto the, the landscape of the business that you're in, I mean, I guess one company comes to mind because they were actually the first affiliate partner of the rideshare guy about five years ago. And okay. uh, do you want to try and guess the company? They're co- I don't know if they're, com- I, I'm going to curious if you think they're a competitor of yours, but, um, do you want to try and guess the company? I, I know who it is, but you can go ahead okay. and say it. So this company, Your Mechanic, um, who you may know, they, they were actually one of the first companies I partnered with about four or five years ago, and they were doing some work with Uber and Lyft drivers. And I think the model seems pretty similar. So I'm curious to know, you know, we don't have to get into that company specifically or others, but it sounds like there is some competition in this space. Um, some may be old, some may be new. So sort of what makes your company stand out? And also why is the, why is the timing right? You know, if it didn't work yeah. for other companies and four or five years ago why is, why is the timing right now for you guys well I, I i think that um first of all there's hundreds of thousands of places to have your car fixed mm-hmm. in the united states right so one or two companies doesn't really make a difference the fact that they're doing it similar not the same uh you know but but mobile um i think generally is positive right mm-hmm. because um they're educating the marketplace that there's other ways to do it right uh so you know primarily most of our customers are switching not from one of these guys to us but from uh, a shop experience or or uh, uh, uh you know fixed operations experience or you know or dealership. trying different things dealer not as much mm-hmm. we try not to, we try to stay out of the dealer world um you know that's mostly warranty yeah. stuff anyway and, and new new vehicle um we're really focused on the five to 20 year old segment you know cars out of warranty got it um we generally don't see the dealership again that much um, so that's primary, you know, that's option a, and, and we try to, you know, uh, educate customers on the benefits of this. And so, but I think that those co- companies were tackling the right problem mm-hmm. with, with slightly, maybe, you know, I would say the wrong solution. And, and I think they had great success from, from a customer standpoint yeah. of, of people liking the idea. I think that the delivery is more challenging when you when when people are showing up in their own vehicles with their own tools, yeah. um, and and are contractors that come and go. Yeah. And so, you know, quality matters in car repair. Yeah. And so, I think that's that's challenging. We couldn't get comfortable with it. We couldn't see how it could work at a big scale. Yeah. Um, and there's just there's no, you know, there has been for you know, 20 plus years, a shortage of mechanics mm. in the U S right. So if you have an industry with a labor shortage, who do you think is sitting around at 2 PM on a Tuesday <laughs> looking for a gig job? Right. I mean, it's just there, a marketplace needs two sides. Yeah. And if you don't have a big supply on one side, it doesn't matter how many consumers think this sounds great. You have to have the other side. And, and, and so, um, you know, that's obviously less of an issue in rideshare. It's just different different fundamentals of the marketplace. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm obviously, you know, I spend a lot of time looking at rideshare and food delivery, but I think looking at these other on-demand and marketplace businesses is because, you know, they're all, you know, they're all marketplaces. They all have supply, they all have demand, but different factors actually make a huge difference. You know, like with Uber and Lyft, yeah. for example, like frankly, quality doesn't really matter because as long as you get from point A to point B, you're kind of like capturing 90 to 95 or 99% of the value. You got to where you want 
wanted to go, right? Yeah. Versus with repairs, you know, if someone comes over and does a terrible job and your car is, you know, making noise the next day or, you know, dripping oil, that is, you know, it's like zero. It's worse than 0%. It's like a negative, you know, it's going to require a refund yeah. or, you know, it's going to actually cost you money. So I, th I think it's interesting to sort of study these other models and sort of like take the best of, you know, another model and understand like where the breaking point in mine is and like kind of where I can stand out. It sounds like the employee and sort of really having someone you can trust. I think another thing that stands out to me, what you've mentioned is sort of having that ability that if there's something like you never want to tell the customer, we can't do this or we're not reliable or we can't make this happen. So for the 10% that you can't do on the truck, it sounds like you've got partners or you've got someone that can fulfill that, even if it's not the ideal situation. Yeah, exactly. It, it, um, we, we wanted to be able to be the first full service mobile repair experience mm -hmm. and full service means, you know, anything you can get down at a shop, we'll take care of and you never have to leave your house. And you're right that the, 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 you know, the specific, the Uber four doesn't, doesn't work in every industry. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, the, the car is somebody's, you know, second most valuable thing, uh, you know, asset, yeah. if not their first most valuable asset. And they also go into it with a high level of distrust. You, a lot of people, as soon as a mechanic shows up, think they're about to be ripped off, mm -hmm. right? So if the starting point is like <laughs> distrust, you make the smallest mistake or yeah. even like, you know, look, we care a, a lot about making every customer happy. But, and even when you want to bend over backwards, not everyone's going to be happy. Right. And, you know, um, you can't be perfect every time, especially as you're scaling and growing and stuff like that. And we try, you know, we try to fix, if we make a mistake, we're, 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 we try to overcompensate for it. But even that, there's some people who just go on so skeptical that you, you, you do the smallest thing wrong yeah. and you get a one star review, right? So I think people don't have that skepticism about a taxi or, mm -hmm. or a ride that they're about to get completely screwed over yeah. and so we have to we have to be extra extra good to just be good yeah so what are your thoughts on uber and lyft drivers and i guess you would say sort of high mileage gig work high mileage driving gig workers as a you know customer segment do you see a lot of those folks already in the numbers do you have specific partnerships or are they just kind of an interesting you know segment uh, to, to you guys at repair smith no i mean they're they are an interesting segment to us at repair smith right because they put a ton of miles on those vehicles and they need the maintenance and the services to keep them up and running and they need it cost effectively and with minimal downtime right yeah. you, you don't you put your you, you drop your vehicle off at a at a busy shop and get it back a day or two later that's that's you're out of business for yeah. a day or two right so um you know we certainly think it's a great product for them uh, we also service a number of the car rental companies that do the monthly rentals mm -hmm. of these vehicles and, and monthly maintenance of yeah. the vehicles. And so we see a ton of them, right? And and they need TLC on a monthly basis, yeah. basically. Um, and so, you know, we think, it's, we think it's a great segment. It's certainly much more maintenance oriented than repair, um, where our regular customer, you know, we might see, um, you know, Two, two maintenances for each repair mm -hmm. on, on, on a ride share, we'll see, you know, five maintenances per repair or something. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I kind of forgot that it's in the name Repairsmith, but you guys also do repairs, not just maintenance, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Like I said, every, you know, anything that's wrong, we'll, we'll take it apart and put it back together okay. correctly. Cool. Well, uh, rounding things out, uh, you know, sort of the last question I have, um, I'm, I'm curious to know, sort of just going forward, what do you, what do you see in Repairsmith's future? You mentioned some expansion, um, and then is it just sort of about kind of reaching more people, more cities? What's the plan there? Well, you know, Reaching a verb is the ultimate plan, right? Mm -hmm. Get your car repair smith. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so no, we have we're a very small player in a very big industry, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, but we think we have a better mousetrap across both for consumers and for fleets. And so, over the coming years, we'll be growing both these verticals, you know, within our current markets, but also across the country. And so, you know, I, I've I've done a bunch of startups. I spent twenty years in startups, and it's exciting. This is my my favorite stage of a business right yeah. which is that we've proved it out you know the product market fit stage is hard right and, yeah. and half the time you think you have a brilliant thing and people say this you know it's okay or it sucks or whatever right it's disappointing and you thought you were so smart and you're actually dumb people didn't like it but we have something that people love not just like they love and and that's for me as an entrepreneur is like yeah the the holy grail and so 
and we're at the stage where we get to now take it from we you know we've proven that it, it works both for customers but also economically and it's a real business and now let's give it to everyone so fun stage. That's what I'll be spending my next couple of years doing. Very cool. Well, I'm excited to uh, go along in the journey with you. And if folks uh, want to check out the service or learn more, where should they go? They should go to repairsmith.com. All right. Perfect, Joel. Well, appreciate you coming on. All right. Thanks for having me.